Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our crucified Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema shabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. Here ends our text. There was darkness over the whole land. A literal darkness had covered the entire land as God's creation cried out and mourned at the suffering and death of Jesus on the cross. God's righteous Son was slaughtered in our place, suffering the righteous wrath of God against a sinful humanity. God was pouring out his wrath upon his son, and creation was crying out because of it. A creation that had been completely broken and tormented by sin because of our fall into sin. And today, there too is a great darkness over our land. As creation continues to cry out as a result of our brokenness and our sinfulness, the darkness of this coronavirus and its effects has covered us all. A troubled economy, confinement to our homes, Change, a changed way of life, uh, of, of life a, uh, a schools closed, businesses closed, churches closed. Panic, fear, and death. All these things of darkness consume our lives today. And we are so consumed by this darkness that, uh, that, uh, that's a consequence of our sinful human nature that it can blind us. This darkness blinds us so that we no longer fix our eyes and see Jesus. All that long we have been looking at, uh, focusing our eyes on Jesus. And while we should always fix our eyes on Jesus, the darkness that is consuming our world right now can so overwhelm us and make it so easy for us to lose our focus on what is truly important. It makes us lose our focus on Jesus and we begin to focus on other things. We set our eyes on our finances. We set our eyes on our health. We set our eyes on who's to blame, casting judgment upon those who aren't following all the guidelines, casting judgment on all of those who have set up such strict guidelines. We focus our eyes and our attention on our very own selfish person. We see the selfishness of our sinful nature on full display, whether it's through the hoarding of supplies, or if it's that selfish focus on me, myself, and I, and my own situation, and my own But tonight, we see things through the eyes of God. Viewing the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus and what, it, what was accomplished there on the cross for our salvation. Yes, God's eyes looks down and it sees a sinful, broken world. And Jesus' death on the cross was provoked by our sin. We were the ones who nailed Jesus to the cross with our sin. 
We have failed to live up to God's commandments. We have failed to live uh, up to his standards. We have failed to live our lives according to God's word and according to God's way. And we fail to put our faith and our trust in him in such times of darkness. We see this going on with the crowds that had mocked Jesus on the cross. He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. They had demanded a sign. They wanted some sort of proof. They wanted to see who Jesus really truly was so that they could believe in him. But they did so mockingly, knowing that he wasn't going to do such a thing. For Jesus had rejected the way of every sign that had been requested, except for that sign of the cross. It was that sign of the cross that was bringing people to faith. And so too we cry out, prove it to us. We exclaim, give me a sign. If God were really a truly loving and caring and compassionate and all-powerful God, then why does, he, why does he not just prove it by taking away this virus and restoring our lives back to normal? If that would happen, then yes, I would truly believe and see. Yet even in the midst of our doubts, in our lack of faith, in our sinfulness, the eyes of God look down on his broken, sinful creation. He looks down with eyes of love, a love so amazing, a love so divine that we can't even comprehend it. God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. For God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And so as we acknowledge our sins, as we recognize our broken nature, we need to see ourselves as the ones who are nailing Jesus to the cross. But at the same time, we recognize that God sees our, our sins taken upon Jesus on the cross. That he sees his wrath being poured, upon, uh, poured out upon Jesus and suffering the hell that we deserve. Suffering hell in our place for us. In that moment of his deepest suffering, Jesus cries out, my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Jesus experiences that full wrath of God, that complete abandonment by God, experiencing hell, hell upon the cross for us, that complete abandonment and separation from God, for that is what hell is, is to be separated from God forever. Jesus experiences that hell upon the cross for us. And some might see this as a cry of despair, but it's not. It can't be, for uh, despair is the complete loss of hope in God. And as the days of this virus continue on and drag out, into the days and weeks and possibly even months to come, it can be easy for us to fall into that despair and lose all hope. But we notice that even in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of his deepest suffering, Jesus still calls out to my God. Jesus remains faithful to the very end. He remains faithful to God, not crying out in despair, but he looks to his Father with perfect faith and trust in my God, my God. Jesus cries out in faith to his God, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. 
spirit. And he breathed his last. The eyes of God looks down on this world. To not only see a sinful world. But he looks down into this world with his eyes to see a forgiven and redeemed world. A forgiven and redeemed world through his son. A world of sinners saved through, uh, through the blood of our Savior Jesus. Shed for you on the cross for the forgiveness of all your sins. The eyes of God stares into your sinful eyes. His eyes tell you, I love you. I love you so much that I would give you up my only son to die for you. I love you so much that I would give him up to suffer my wrath in your place, to suffer hell upon that cross, to save you from your sins, to save you from death, and to save you from hell. When the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he had breathed his last, he said, Truly this was the Son of God. Mark begins his gospel by saying, The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And 15 chapters into Mark, we finally see a human being Confessing this truth of God's Son. Confessing Jesus for who He truly is as the Son of God. It takes us 15 chapters for a Roman centurion to recognize and see Jesus and believe. Truly this man was the Son of God. The first human being to express that faith in Jesus. In Mark's gospel, it took the death of Jesus for the forgiveness of the sins of the whole world, for the eyes of faith to be opened. The death of Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins is what gives us eyes of faith. That we may look to him to fix our eyes on Jesus, to fix our eyes upon his cross that forgives us of all of our sins, that we may trust and believe in God, even in the midst of such darkness, so that we do not fall into despair. But that we would live in the comfort, the peace, and the joy of our Savior, Jesus. Even in the midst of our darkness. On Good Friday, God sees everything that is necessary to save you from sin, death, and hell. Even though our own eyes fail to look to Jesus, to fix our eyes on Him. Even when we look upon our own sinfulness and the guilt that comes from it. God's eyes look on look upon you. His eyes look upon you as his forgiven and redeemed children whom he loves. His forgiven and redeemed children for the sake of Christ who took his uh, to took your sins upon himself to crucify your sins along with him to forgive you of all of your sins both now and forever. Amen.